On today's show... To become the man that he is today, um, fixing the cycle in his family where he's a good father now, a uh, good husband, um, it's just remarkable. Ryan found the love he was searching for and gained more than he ever expected. Welcome to the 700 Club Canada. I'm Brian Warren. And I'm Lori Hartshorn. We're so glad that you've joined us. Today you'll see how one young man found hope and a new beginning after a tough childhood led to a life on the run and even prison. And seeing how God can take something bad in life and use it for good, well, it's so inspiring. Isn't that true, Brian? It really is. Yeah, we've both seen that happen in our life. You know, one of the things that we do see on a regular basis, and not only with the program, but also in the ministry that God gives us, how he can turn one bad situation after another around into something spectacular. Oh, for sure. I mean, if I was to begin to count how many yeah. marriages I've personally witnessed that yes. were on the brink. In fact, one uh, quick story I, I, I think I shared not too long ago with you that yeah. these couples in our church, they were separated for many years. In fact, eight years they mm -hmm. were apart and God restored their marriage, yes. right? Another couple, three and a half years, God restored their marriage. They were already, had gone through the divorce papers. Yes. And God brought them back together. I mean, that is magnificent. And one that you and I both uh, just recognize close to home that you've seen is how God can take children oh. that seemingly are going on a wrong path and just completely turn oh, them around goodness, and then yeah. cause them to become world changers. Right? Yeah. I mean, you've met Curtis. Yes. <laughs> Do I need to say more, right? No. I mean, from darkness to light and now just a kingdom wrecker, I'd say, yeah. you know? Just a powerful yeah. tool. It's so encouraging. You know, we've seen thousands of stories over the years, and one thing stands out to me, and that is no matter what the situation or the choices we've made in life, God can and will turn anything around Absolutely that we give to him. Absolutely right. And later in the show, Pastor Robin Waller has a powerful teaching on how God uses the most unlikely people in powerful ways. He does. But first, this is how Doris's life was torn to pieces and put back together again. I remember screaming and I ran over to my dad and just as I got there, he fell. And my, my whole world was just turned upside down that day. When Doris Walker was just 12, her father was murdered in front of her. A very troubled family member came into our family home and severely injured my mom and shot my father. And the life I had always known died right along with him. I began to live in denial. No matter how hard I try, I cannot get this vision out of my mind. I just had to play it out as though he was out of town and he'll be back soon. And I knew he wasn't coming back, but that was the only way I could halfway get through it. Dora spent years trying to come to terms with her father's death. My dad was my hero. He actually was. He taught me so much about the Word of God. He taught me about music. So he would sing. He sang in the choir. My dad was a farmer. And he'd come home at night, and he would be so tired. But he was never too tired to put us on his knee and talk to us. Doris accepted Christ as a young girl and sang in her church choir. But after her father's death, she began to numb her emotional pain with marijuana. Every time I would think about this, dreaded scene where he fell on the ground, I would smoke marijuana. And I began to smoke it more and more. And then my body began to crave it. And by the time I was an adult, I had a full-blown cocaine addiction. Doris left her home and family in the small town of White House, Tennessee, and began living on the streets of Nashville. She did whatever it took to survive, including prostitution. It didn't start right away. At first, I would just sit around other women, and they would go out and get money and come back. And I'm thinking, well, that must have been easy. One time, I tried it, and I made it through it. And I thought, well, that wasn't as bad as I thought. And I trade myself to get out of the cold, blistering weather. And I trade myself to get out of the hot sun. Doris was arrested numerous times, but it had no effect on her. My life was full of going to jail and getting out of jail and selling myself as though I was some type of a commodity to support my habit. And I was actually in my addiction for over 26 years. When Doris would return home for short periods of time, her family and friends would pray for her. It's almost as if her countenance had just had just fallen, but you could just tell that the insides were, were, were hurting. 
For a brief period, Doris got married, but she returned to the streets when the marriage fell apart. I had a husband and two children, and for a while I was able to hold it all together. And then finally it just fell apart because I just couldn't do it anymore. Uh, my, my addiction progressed. I left him because he was an alcoholic, and lo and behold, that's when my life really fell apart. The next two decades were a vicious cycle of addiction and incarceration. One day, her mother invited her back to a reunion at her old church. She said, Doris, can you do something for me? She said, we're having an anniversary at our church, and we need you to come on back home and sing some of the songs that your dad taught me. Could you do that for me before I die? And one morning, I could hear my mom. She was praying so fiercely that you could almost feel the vibrations coming from her. And she's singing, and she's praying with all her mouth. Oh, Lord, I want you to help me. And she's praying, God, don't let my daughter go back to the street. So I do what I came to do. I go to the choir rehearsal. I go to the choir and I sing and I praise. So I was just on a spiritual high that night and I thought, oh my God, there's another kind of high. I don't have to sell myself and I don't have to induce drugs because my body is the temple of God. Shortly after that, Doris ran into her old friend Regina, who told her about a place called Magdalene House, which ministers to women caught in the web of the sex trade and addiction. She said, we got a place for you and you can come on in. So November the 9th, 2009, I got my life back. I got to go into the Magdalene program, and they took care of me. They sent me to the dentist. They sent me to therapy. They taught me the how to live life on life terms without the use of drugs and alcohol. And I got my relationship back with God. And I remember how to pray again. So I get high on the Word of God and on the Spirit of God, and it's just like, it's breathtaking. And I breathe it in. I, haven't had, I hadn't had a drug or a drink of liquor in nine whole years. And that's just a testament to how great God is. If people can just see the faithfulness of the Lord just by, by, just by hearing her story, it's all worth it because the Lord is faithful. What looked like a mess, what looked like there is no way that this is gonna get resolved, the Lord resolved it, and he resolved it in a mighty way, a mighty way. Through Magdalene House and their sister organization, Thistle Farms, Doris began a new life. Doris was eventually hired by Thistle Farms, where she now works as an ambassador for the organization and as a sales consultant. We have women all across the globe. And I get to stand in front of people and tell my life story. And I get to let women know that are in addiction that God is able no matter what you're going through in life. I don't care if it's your health, if it's cancer, if it's a mental illness, if it's addiction, no matter what it is, God is able. He has brought me out. He has given me a new life. He has given me my voice back. I'm able to tell people that no matter what, it's going to be okay. I'm not saying that I'm never gonna have problems again. That's okay, because when you got God on your side, when Jesus is standing there beckoning you, saying, come on home, it's going to be okay. Well, Dora said it, God is able. God is able, no matter what you're going through, he is able. Isn't this an incredible testimony of that truth? I mean, 26 plus years of addiction from a trauma that occurred in her childhood, seeing her father, uh, murdered. I mean, she stuffed it down, right? Which is understandable. You see, actually, God gave us this thing called denial. You see, denial's a, 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 a mechanism that we use to help protect ourselves from traumatic events like the one that Doris witnessed. But here's the thing about denial. If you stay in denial, it will destroy you. And her turning, shutting everything down, pushing everything down, led her into a life of addiction and struggle for so many years. Here is the truth of it. Even when traumatic things happen to us, Jesus said, bring them to me. Bring them to me. Don't stay stuck in denial. Jesus can handle the trauma. Jesus can handle the most difficult things that you've faced in your life. He wants to walk through that trial with you. And that's the difference. When we are willing to break out of denial 
and take the hand of Jesus, he'll walk us through to freedom on the other side. You know, there's a powerful verse. I just love it. Uh, Proverbs 16, 25. First of all, it's a bit of a warning. It says, there's a way that seems right to a man. I would say the way of denial seems right to most of us, but it is the way of death. But Jesus says, today, if you hear my voice, don't harden your heart. Don't shut me out. Invite me into your pain and I will heal you. You know, you might be asking the question today, can I be healed? And it might be emotional healing from a traumatic situation like we've seen today. Yes, you can be healed if you're willing to bring your trauma to Jesus. He will walk you through to the other side with great freedom. Remember, he's able. He's able. Up next, Ryan's life is more proof that every life is redeemable. Give us a call. We want to pray with you today. Looking back on his childhood, Ryan Forbes remembers his father's struggle with alcoholism, the emotional and physical abuse he endured at home, and the fear he felt that led him to a life of running. I recall kind of hiding a lot, um, whether it was just hiding behind some persona of humor that I made up or literally hiding uh, under furniture, uh, run away from my house. I would be outside till all hours because um, I didn't feel safe and I didn't want to be at home. As a teenager, drugs, alcohol, and partying became his release. He eventually dropped out of high school. In 2001, on the night he would have graduated, he was arrested for driving under the influence at the age of 18. Soon after, he received his first felony charge for stealing a motorcycle. While out on bail, he was at an underage drinking party when a fight broke out and police were called to the scene. It was his first of many arrests by Officer Wendell Metzler. I saw him hiding behind a, a bush, and I ended up uh, running from him and getting into a fight with him and assaulting him, so I got a felony, aggravated assault on a police officer. If there was trouble, he was usually the guy behind it. In 2002, Ryan was arrested several times for disorderly conduct, fighting, and marijuana possession. Then in 2003, he served time for driving under the influence and leading police on a high-speed chase. Surrounded by chaos, he felt empty inside. One of the major things that I felt I was missing, missing out on was um, love, but not just love as an abstract idea, but love in the sense of, you know, a loving father. Ryan remembered saying the salvation prayer and asking Jesus into his heart when he was a little boy. During his prison sentences, he would reconnect with God, but he'd return to his old ways. In that place where I didn't feel any value, uh, in a prison cell, God continued to faithfully reach out to me and love on me. And eventually something started to change inside and I realized that I was valuable and that I was worth something to him. When I was released, I found myself caught up with the old friends, um, people, places and things. Uh, I didn't have a church family yet and I wound up back on drugs. In 2004, he faced off with Officer Wendell again and rammed his police car during a high-speed chase. He was arrested and sentenced to a year in prison. After being released, he binged on cocaine and prescription pills for six months. I remember thinking, I have no hope at all for a better life. I have no hope of ever owning a home, ever having a family, ever having children, and I really felt like taking my life. Ryan was alone and crying when a familiar presence surrounded him. Where I felt the love of God uh, enter in and capture my heart, that I felt totally valued and loved and held, and that's when I knew, like, okay, God, you got me. I've tried so many ways to do it myself, but I'm gonna let you do it, and uh, I surrendered to him. He called his probation officer, confessed about his drug use, and began a Christian transition program. 
Ryan stopped running and began to right his wrongs, starting with Officer Wendell. And he was willing to talk to me, and I just took responsibility for my actions and apologized. The power of forgiveness, it exists, and you know, if, if you're at odds with someone and you let that fester, you, you could be missing out on one of the best opportunities of your life. Wendell began inviting Ryan over for dinner with his family, and today, the two have a special bond. My relationship with Wendell is awesome. You know, he's one of my best friends, so he was the best man at my wedding. Uh, we hang out often. Uh, we encourage one another, we call one another, we pray for one another. Um, that's my brother. Ryan and Wendell share their story through speaking engagements and their book, Unchained. One thing it's taught me is every life is redeemable. We had kind of predicted that he, Ryan wouldn't be alive by age 23 because of the lifestyle that he was living. And to become the man that he is today, um, fixing the cycle in his family where he's a good father now, a uh, good husband, um, it's just remarkable. He's earned two bachelor degrees and works at the prison where he once served time. Ryan found the love he was searching for and gained more than he ever expected. The wonderful, wonderful life that God has blessed me with, that he has given me um, his grace and his mercy. I, yeah, I get emotional because he's a good, good father and his character is good and he loves his son and I'm happy that he does. You know, I love a happy ending. And it's interesting what Ryan said. He says, I did a lot of hiding. And I really believe that is such a powerful metaphor of what it is when we don't know what our true identity is. You know, when you don't really know who you are and you don't feel safe, that's what Ryan was talking about, then we begin to do a lot of things to try to develop that safety net, that place where we feel like we're secure. He used humor, but by the time he went to prison and everything else, then he began to now start searching in his own heart for what is really peace in my life. You know, it's, it's, it's terrible that anyone has to grow up with an upbringing where there's violence in the home. But those traumas of a, maybe a father or a mother can have a ramification that continues to follow us all through our lives until we begin to come to a place and we say, you know, I didn't choose my parents, uh, but I can choose my heavenly father. You know, uh, it's interesting. The Bible says something that's very powerful. It, it speaks about a lost coin and, uh, and it talks about a, a lost son in, in Luke's gospel in chapter 15. And it's called the parable of the prodigal son. He was lost and he went to a, a far country and in the, he, he found out that he says, this is just not working for me. He came to himself. I wonder if you've come to yourself and you say, there's something missing. You know, only God can make enemies become allies and become peaceful. And that's what happened with Officer Wendell. And that's what happened with Ryan. And it can happen for you as well. God can make peace with your past. And I want to lead you in a prayer. I will not embarrass you, but I believe it's going to be a new day for you. If you've been searching around and you're out of circulation right now, why don't you pray this prayer, call that number on the screen, and then begin to start your walk. Pray this prayer. Jesus, I surrender. I open my heart. Please make me what you want me to be. In Jesus' name. It starts now. Call that number. People want to know, is there a plan and how do you find it? CBN presents The Plan. Eight keys for understanding God's will for your life. We're going to talk about God's plan for your life. Is there a plan for everyone to life? In Pat Robertson's latest teaching, you'll discover the secret to knowing and living out God's unique purpose for you. The plan of God will be unfolded in your life in ways you couldn't believe possible. In the plan, Pat reveals the principles to understanding God's will so that you will be filled with peace, provision, joy, and satisfaction. Plus, see amazing stories of how others are living out their individual purpose intended by God. God is faithful <laughs> and we did what he told us to do. Live the life God has designed for you. I hope that God works out a plan in you that will bring blessing, joy, peace, and happiness. Get the plan. Available now.
Hey, how's it going? My name's Robin Waller. I'm the lead pastor at Live Church, a church on a mission to see churches thriving on our college and university campuses. You know, Jesus has this incredible call and invitation that he puts forward to us to be fully alive in him. He promises us this full, radical, beautiful life. But for many of us, that doesn't seem to be our reality. We seem to live kind of in the mundane day to day sort of resigned to a normal life, not a radical, unbelievable life. There's this scene in the scriptures that challenges me when I read it. It comes out of Matthew chapter 4. It says this, uh, Jesus is walking through a place called Galilee, and he comes across two brothers. And as he sees them, they were casting their net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And follow me, he told them, and I will make you fish for people, I will make you fishermen. He gives them this new identity. Verse 20, it says, immediately they left their nets and followed him. If you fast forward a couple years, those brothers would become central to this movement that would transform the world. They would go from being pretty regular people to being the leaders of a movement that was transformative. It's incredible. How did that happen? I think we tend to look at this story and assume that like, maybe they were super special, uh, they were in the right place at the right time. I mean, flip, Jesus asked them, come on, of course they were going to follow. But, but there's actually something really important in, in what we read here about what it means to be a fisherman. The two brothers that follow Jesus, I think we assume that, that they were getting out of a life that they didn't like. But if you read about first century fishermen in, in a place called Galilee, what you'll discover is that they were actually, they were doing pretty well. Fishermen I had good jobs, they were enjoying their life, much like many of us. You know, many of you, maybe like me, trained to be a particular profession. I trained to be an engineer. And yet one day Jesus said, hey Robin, I'd like you to start leading a church. And so here I am leading a church. Jesus makes these calls to these fishermen and, and yet they seem to respond. It is that radical willingness to follow that marks their lives. It wasn't necessarily that they were special, but that they were willing. They were willing to step in and be obedient to the call. The second thing that, that kind of blows my mind about this is that they weren't special in terms of ability. They were special in terms of obedience. They were willing to follow Jesus, not because they knew exactly where they were going or because they knew exactly what the outcomes were, or because they knew exactly who they were yet, but they knew as they started to trust Jesus with their future, that there would be something beautiful in store. So my invitation is twofold to you. If you want to start to live that radical fisherman life of Jesus, that life of purpose, first, it starts with being willing to let go of the things you're holding on to. What are the markers in your life that you're, you're hanging on to? Maybe it's your job, maybe it's your security. Are you willing to let that go? Secondly, are you willing to trust Jesus with your future? allowing him to lead you, him to guide you, him to help you, him to sustain you. That is what it means to be a fisher of people and a follower of Jesus. Jesus said it, I came to give you life, life to the fullest, life in your family, life in your finances, life in your body, mind and spirit life in your every day we're here to help you discover life appreciate what Robin had to share. Yeah, he's an excellent teacher, isn't he? Mm -hmm. And this whole show has been such a great reminder that yeah. every life is valuable and yeah. redeemable. I used to work for John Maxwell, as you know, and mm -hmm. he has this saying, put a 10 on top of everyone's head, you know, 10 out of 10. Yeah. And it's just this idea that when every time you look at someone, you look at them the way God looks at them, they are a uh -huh. 10 out of 10. They are of high value. Yes. There is nothing that they can do that will actually lessen God's love for them. You're so right. God loves you no matter what you do or what you have done. But so often what's, what people struggle with is they don't understand God's plan. Mm. 
And, uh, you know, we have something for you. If you are wondering about God's plan for your life, and as a monthly partner, if you will link arms with us, we'd love to get this into your hands. And it talks about God's plan, God's purpose, and Pat Robertson talks to you how you can literally live that best life that God has for you. Now, it's a suggested offering of $20, but if you can give your best gift, it would be such an encouragement to us. one 855 700 Prayer partners are standing by. Well, because you mean so much to us, and even interaction on uh, Facebook, as we do our Facebook Lives every day with the show, comment below and say, hey, I'm watching, or yeah. if you have a prayer request, and we're there for you, we want to respond. Uh, but today we want to pray for Patricia. Mm -hmm. She sent in a request from BC. She's praying for salvation for Marilyn. So she really loves Marilyn, because that's the best request, right? That is, what yeah. a great friend. And also Heather, would you put her on your prayer list? And she's praying that she encounters Jesus. Mm. It's a good prayer. Well, Father, I lift up, I thank you for Patricia's Yes. love for Marilyn, and that she would ask us to pray for Marilyn's salvation. We just stand in agreement and that she would come to you, Lord Jesus, that she would say yes to you. Yes. Today, may it be so, may she enter the kingdom of God in Jesus' name. And Father, for Heather, she wants to encounter Jesus. We pray that you would open her eyes and that she would begin to see God moments. And those moments would come whether she's uh, Lord, out of her home or whether she's listening to the radio or washing dishes, we pray that you would begin to speak over her. Zephaniah chapter 3 says, the Lord rejoices with singing over you, Heather, and those of you that are watching. I pray that she would hear a song and she would hear a father's voice, but that she would quickly respond by saying, Lord, I am your servant. I'm here. Speak, Lord, for I'm listening. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. That prayer was for you, too. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, there's a great verse in Exodus 15, verse 13. It says, in your unfailing love, that means it can never fail. It can never, you know, be too short, right? That's right. You will lead the people you've redeemed. Mm -hmm. In your strength, you will guide them to your holy dwelling. Hold on to that today. You are loved and you are valuable to God. Nothing is unredeemable. Walk with Him today. To contact us, phone 1-855-759-0700. You can email us at cba at 700club.ca or write to us at Christian Broadcasting Associates, Incorporated. The 700 Club Canada, P.O. Box 700, Scarborough, Ontario, M1S 4T4. You can now like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter or Instagram. Tomorrow on the 700 Club Canada. Jamie and Michael married and his perspective began to change as he said yes to Christ. But in 2008, one particular race in Texas would put his new faith to the test. 